the blog was never about getting a job. It was about creating a name for myself and owning my work. I think when you start doing these internships and you start working at these companies and say they let you go or you know after two weeks your internship is done, you've contributed to their bottom line. You've contributed to their SEO and their, you know, like traffic for that week. And you know, you have a couple of things to show for it, but where do you put that? Hi. Welcome to Black Ticulate, 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 a podcast series featuring UK young black professionals where we find out how they do what they do so you can too. Or not. After all, it is your life. <laughs> Phoebe Parks, say hi. Hello. Am I saying that right? Phoebe Parks. It's Phoebe Park. With Park, no, no S. S. Yes. Okay, well, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Black Ticulate. First and Thank foremost, you. actually... I need to say, for those of you, if this is the first time you're joining us because you saw the guest, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jake, can always appreciate any new listeners. So we are Black Ticulate, and Black Ticulate is simple. We feature young UK black professionals where we try and find out exactly how they do what they do, so you can too. Phoebe, please tell the powers that be, my listeners, who you are what you do and we'll just chop it up from there that's cool okay so my name is phoebe park i am a social media editor a journalist and one quarter of the receipts podcast which is a uk podcast fronted by four women where we talk about relationships dating men men being trash Wow. and then sometimes like career <laughs> i'm sat right here as well. i have she to me, be honest she looked me dead in the eye as well she went men being trash <laughs> wow okay it's gonna be fire this <laughs> i could tell okay so phoebe you actually mentioned quite a few hats and i guess mm-hmm. that is really quite typical for millennials as well right definitely yeah, yeah especially in london man we hustle we do multiple mm-hmm. things side hustles main hustles yeah you extra know. hustles Main chick, side chick, etc. No, I'm joking. The men are trash, that. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't even get into that because that is your remit and that's not black articulate. Um, fundamentally, you do do a lot of things, but they do all revolve around communication and media, mm. don't they? Yeah, exactly. How did you start and why media and communication? Like mm. growing up, let me know. So I think I always knew I wanted to be a journalist, but I didn't know the name for it so I was how? always Why? I know <laughs> yeah, like, wait a minute how did you know you always wanted to be a journalist I don't know I think I always wanted to tell stories and that's technically what journalism is right. but I didn't know how to communicate that I guess at a young age but I was always into storytelling reading writing um, English literature so I did um, a degree in German and English literature German I know okay I knew that was going <laughs> to be a moment it always is <laughs> So my I was degree, like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> my degree was English and German literature at the University of Warwick. And right. so it was like a 50-50 split, half German and half um, English literature. Right. There was also a focus in the German side of things on German literature as well. So there was lots of reading, basically. Can mm. I park you for a second? You may park me. <laughs> Are you fluent? I was nearly fluent. What the, what do you mean nearly? Because the thing is, it's like, it's like a muscle. If you don't speak German, you, you lose it until you hear something and then you, you start speaking again. So if you were to be thrown in the heart of Berlin, you'd be all right though? You know, a lot of Germans speak English, which was part of the, (laughs) (laughs) part of the problem. But if I was thrown into rural Germany, I could, I could get by and it comes back to you once you start speaking and, and things like that. So. Okay. Yeah. So apologies, I did derail you. You were saying <laughs> journalism, you always wanted to tell stories. Yeah, always at wanted early to tell age. stories. Did that undergraduate degree. At Warwick. At Warwick, yeah. yeah. And then I think kind of in my final year I realised I want to be a journalist because I'd been blogging. Um okay. which was the in thing back then. Yeah. Not that it's not now, but you know, it was really booming then. So I do you remember a website called Papst? I don't. You don't? Okay. <laughs> Too niche. No, no, well, hold tight. What was Paps? Like, <laughs> oh, Paps was... Um, I really hope some of the listeners will remember Paps because it was an amazing site. Basically, um, <laughs> like, urban gossip. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Before urban was like a really cliche word. Yeah. Like UK... Before, before urban. <laughs> gossip and yeah. Worldstar. Well, it was the UK version of, of Worldstar. Okay. So it was like... 
people like Lady Leisha, Tiny Temper, yeah. whenever they would like tweet something, do something, that was where we wrote about it. Right. Um, and I was like head of the fashion section. So, you know, those like very basic hot or not yes. things, yes. but with UK celebs. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember mm-hmm. that. Hot or not. Jeez, yeah. that was huge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was doing during my university. And then I kind of realized, yeah, this is definitely what I want to do. Right. So I uh, did my master's in journalism. Okay. Yeah. Phoebe, I don't know if it's fair for me to say this, and please correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but you seem like you're someone who's very focused. You know exactly what you want, and mm. then you sort of go out and get that. Mm. Was that always the case? Like your upbringing, you need to tell me more. I mean, you're, yeah. you're mixed, right? Yes. My mum is Jamaican, black, and my dad is originally from Newcastle, actually. But he, um, yeah, he's white, British. Gotcha. As they say on the forms. What was growing up like? Do you have any stories, any um, fun memories, anything that really started shaping you to who you are? You see what I'm trying to get with this? I'm trying yeah. to join some dots. I do. Who I is like it. Phoebe? <laughs> um, um, I think one thing I always remember about growing up as there was always a newspaper around okay which is it's usually the guardian um which i think really shaped the way that's high brow stuff isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> i think really shaped the way you know like dinner table conversations i've got two older sisters right so dinner table conversations were very adult like my middle sister is six years older than me oh, wow. so everyone's an adult at the table and i'm the baby right so it's either you find out what they're talking about when they're talking about like housing tony blair riots like protests, Iraq, either you figure out what they're talking about or you sit there and eat your food. Yes. <laughs> so I think you kind of, even if you, you heard about something, then you go and Google it in your spare time or you obviously ask your parents, what was that who's Tony Blair, yeah. like what is happening? You know, if they're watching the news, they've got the news on the radio, you absorb some of that. And then both my parents are teachers, so there was always a task to do. There was always, you know, oh, just read this and tell me the key points. And it's like, it's a Saturday. I'm trying to, like, enjoy my (laughs) baked beans and planting or whatever I'm having. So there was always some comprehension to do. There was always, like, underline all the adjectives in this Guardian article. Really? Yeah. Always. So I think that's where, like, my love of words came from. And we didn't really watch TV that much. Um, people now tell me about like all the things I miss. So whenever you guys are talking about like references on Twitter, right. I have no idea. We're talking about Proud Family. Never seen it. Um, I saw Fresh Prince of Bella because it was on Channel Two. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's literally it. So I <laughs> I'm grateful now that I spent so much time building my vocabulary and reading and writing. But at the time, it was kind of like, oh, everyone's talking about this new MTV video and I haven't seen it. Then that in itself is quite interesting because obviously you're quite studious because Mm. your household was quite academic. Yeah. Parents Mm -hmm. are teachers Mm -hmm. and you've got elder siblings, Mm -hmm. two sisters, Mm -hmm. one is six years older and the other... Nine years older. Okay. So it's an adult home. (laughs) Yeah, so it seems, so it seems. Yeah. You're tight with them? You're close? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really close. Um, I think it's different because there's obviously an age gap, but... I think that's why people think I'm older than I am because I act like my sisters right. who are like in their 30s and I'm like 26. But compared to people who are my age, I definitely act like 30 year old. <laughs> well, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. if your family was older than mm. you were, then naturally that's the yeah. things that you're going to yeah, yeah. Um, inherit mm. to say the least. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I now get the journalism side of trying <laughs> to just ensure... English and just underlining adjectives. Good lord! Yeah, that's, uh, fun I still times. think that's a fun. <laughs> I still think that's a fun task now, but maybe I shouldn't share that with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, good times. So we're fast forwarding. <laughs> we're in primary school, just being a rug rat, doing your thing, enjoying life, and then you started thinking career-wise, journalism, but you didn't know mm. what it was called. Yeah, and then when you finished a levels at that time i guess you started to have a better understanding yeah i think i knew i wanted to read books basically and then english literature degree allowed me to read books right you know weekly um and i'd studied german in school so i had like a basic understanding and at that time all the advice was do a language it will set you apart from the (laughs) from the others and i think you know i think it does i think just the discipline of learning a language is really important because 
when we're kind of like taught English, we're not taught about what the names of lots of things are. We have our adjectives and things like that. We're not really taught about tenses. Mm, no, you're right. And you're right. so when it comes, that's I, why I think in English people are quite bad at learning other languages because we just don't know what things are called. Yeah. And people are talking about, you know, the gender of different words and we don't have that yeah. in English. So I think that's a really great skill. And if you learn one language, they said you'll be able to learn others easier. I haven't. But not yet. <laughs> not I mean, yet. There's time. time. <laughs> def- def- definitely a lot of time. Yeah. OK, so now I'm with you. So like, I'm glad. Reach a <laughs> bit. I'm, I'm glad you're glad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hope the listeners are also with us. Um, whilst at uni, were you doing freelance blog yeah year. Like what was it? does your blog still exist or my blog does still exist. does it okay. yeah i wasn't i was blogging i was working for paps at that time so that was like my blogging outlet then i hadn't started my personal blog yet i didn't even have a website yet i don't think okay but um i was working for other people i was doing um when i did my master's i did lots of like internships Two weeks here, two weeks there. Like Pride magazine was a great one. Yeah, amazing. Um, Black Beauty and Hair magazine was a great one. Telegraph was a great one on the book's desk. Woo. How so are you, how are you getting all of these? I I think it was a lot easier back then okay. because I just wrote to them and said, "Hi, I'm doing a master's in journalism. I would love to come in, and I would only do like one week, two weeks." And they have people on. You know, they need an, an internal work experience person at all times. I think magazines really rely on interns and work experience people right gotcha what do they do these interns and work experience you know it depends from place to place but telegraph i got to write each oh, day okay. i had something printed in the paper what? um because it's amazing <laughs> exactly yeah so wh- whenever there's a gap you know if you show that you're willing and you're you're good at what you do then they'll usually let they really do rely on interns gotcha I guess it's not paid as well, though, right? Well, this is th- that's why I did it for two weeks. <laughs> 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 because it was kind of in the Easter holidays or in the Christmas holidays. I wouldn't have been earning money yeah. anyway, so I could kind of like go and do that. But if you have a job, it's kind of impossible for yeah. you to say, I'm going to take two weeks off to go and work at the Telegraph or go and intern at the Telegraph. That's just not really realistic. What advice would you give then? So... Funny yeah. you ask. <laughs> <laughs> I when I finished. Why you say that like that? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I'd get to mention this. So Brilliant. when I finished my my masters, I got one of those emails, and I always ignore emails, but I didn't ignore this one, mm. and it was from Creative Access, and they yes, are they're a great platform. Aren't yeah, they? so this is why I'm happy that you asked. Um, so Creative Access is a charity that its main aim is to get more people of color into the media. Yeah. Yeah, all the creative arts. Um, so I got an email from them. They said, come to Channel 4 and have a workshop with us and we'll tell you, you know, some things about what we do. Went along because they said Channel 4 <laughs> building. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to take a picture outside. So it's Love definitely that. where I want to <laughs> go. So went and um, found out like some opportunities on their website, applied to one newspaper that I didn't get, but then they... You didn't want to name a shame, did you? Shame. Wow, you are media <laughs> trained. Phoebe really was on the flow and then she just like paused. I was like, what? <laughs> At the newspaper okay. that will remain, remain nameless. Um, and then Josie, who is the um, founder of... Uh, one of the founders of uh, Creative Access, emailed me and said, hey, you know that thing you applied for? You didn't get it, but this is another one you should apply for. So right. I applied for one and it was at CNN. And I got my three month internship there paid. Amazing. Because that's all Creative Access offers. They are all paid internships. And the I think the minimum time you can do an inter- internship for is three months, which is so great because then you actually get bylines, you actually get to meet people and right. you actually see what the company's like. Just for those who don't know what byline is. Oh, your name at the top of an article. Awesome. Basically. There you yeah. go. Credits. Some, <laughs> yeah, credits. There you go. Receipts. Yeah, receipts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, what a plug. <laughs> what a plug. Credit. No, yeah. okay, amazing. So Creative Access really were the catalyst for your career definitely, path. Definitely, definitely. But prior to that, you're still doing a lot of work experience. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You're still getting your work out. Mm-hmm. You still had a blog that was predominantly yes. focused around fashion, was it? So my blog was funnily enough relationships and dating which i seem to kind of be obsessed with despite the fact that i don't do much of it but i had (laughs) um my blog like i had these it was just so fun for me to write about something that was kind of tongue-in-cheek and and funny 
So I would write things like, you know, the best date locations in London right. um, that aren't Nando's or, you know, like five signs that he's a keeper okay. or like 21 signs you should leave him. Wow. So things you like were, that. Yeah, you were definitely <laughs> <laughs> clickbait with them headlines. Yeah. You were before, BuzzFeed before even, BuzzFeed. Exactly. <laughs> I should have like capitalized on it. Yeah. So, yeah, I was kind of doing that whilst doing my master's, whilst doing my... Um, my internship as well it's really good to just get your name out there when you kind of like google your name your website should come up i was gonna say i assume you're doing that just to build your mm. writing chops and whatnot mm. but also just build a, a name for yourself definitely yeah did you find a lot of opportunities were coming to you because of that or not really okay no it was so people... now that you know what you do know mm. sorry to interject for okay. a second Phoebe. so now that you do know what you do know if people are starting out in a mm. similar way that you did, you know, building their own blog, now it's usually vlogs. Yeah. Um, mm. What's the best way for them to capitalize or try and get the opportunities that they are seeking career-wise? Mm. I think for me, the blog was never about getting a job oh, it wasn't from it? it. It was about creating a name for myself and owning my work. I think when you start doing these internships and you start working at these companies, and say they let you go or you know after two weeks your internship is done you've contributed to their bottom line you've contributed to their seo and their you know like traffic for that week um like website traffic for that week yeah and you know you have a couple of things to show for it but where do you put that you have to put that on a website or you have to kind of like have those collected somewhere and i wanted people to be able to google me yeah. and have some of my work come up Right, and gotcha. have some of my tell my own story of what I wanted to say about myself rather than having someone else no, tell I, my I story. No, I totally get that. Mm. It's almost like a bit of press clippings, a bit with the work yeah, you've done. You know, exactly. And where yeah, can yeah. people get access to that mm. is by going to your website or yeah. blog at a time. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's brilliant. That's fantastic advice. Interesting. So we are, is it fair to say that you're a journalist then? Yeah. Right? I would say so. But you're also a social media yeah. editor. Mm -hmm. And you're also a podcaster. Yes. We've spoken about <laughs> your route into journalism. Yeah. Right? So how does social media come into play? Mm. Well, I think when I was blogging, the other thing I wanted blogging to do was to get my followers up. Which they call it like a vanity metric now because... Yeah you can have a million followers and then you post something, you tweet something and there's no, no retweets. So yeah. that's why they kind of call it a vanity metric. But I think it shows that you have an engaged audience. You have people who are following you. You have some kind of like gravitas in that area. And I think that's really important. So I was kind of building up my Twitter following from doing these little blogging things. And I was always shouting about when I got you know, like a Telegraph piece or a CNN article, right. I would always be the first one to like post it on Twitter and say, hey, look what I did. And then I made great connections on Twitter right. through that. Um, and I think that's kind of where I got my skills at tweeting and Instagram and Facebook and things like that. And then because the company I was working at, CNN, was so... There weren't many young people, I think that's fair to say, of a lot of right. like... UK and US companies when it comes to media you know it's an older crowd so when someone <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so when <laughs> someone <laughs> yeah, really diplomatic here. Yeah. I appreciate <laughs> it but, you know, you can really go in it's an older it's an older group so when you have the skill you know you can send a tweet and you know you know you need to shorten your link and you need to attach an image and how to use it how to use twitter to get the best engagement and no one else in the office does mm. then you become an asset yeah you become very valuable and then you start shouting about, oh, you know, I could do that Twitter chat. You know, that's how I started out. I started hosting Twitter chats for CNN about different topics. And I was the only one who could be like bothered, really, because people see it as a chore. If you're not into Twitter, it seems like the most boring thing in the world yeah. to sit there and talk to people about a topic. But if you're the only one in the office that w that's willing to do it, then, you know, they're going to let you do it. And then they're going to let you continue to do that. And that's how I became social media editor at CNN working on CNN Africa amazing so that's why i got into it no, and now i actually like it 
<laughs> so, I mean, with jeez, you are <laughs> a Twitter lady to say the least. Oh, um, I love Twitter. You are. You got a blue tick, haven't you? I have. What? Yeah. So very fine. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. That's I'm right. I'm in front of a celeb out here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> in front of a celeb, <laughs> a Twitter verified celeb. So I guess the best practices, insofar as using Twitter as mm-hmm. a channel, let's say, as opposed to Facebook or any other, mm-hmm. is whenever you do have your content that is, you might have a byline, anything that's out there that could be Googled, mm-hmm. you do need to promote it. Like, yeah, what's, I guess, the best practices using Twitter to grow yourself and an audience? I think that you should never send the same tweet twice. Okay. The same exact tweet. In fact, Twitter didn't ever let you send the same tweet twice. Really? Yeah. You just no. say, you've tweeted this already. Stop. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> I think you can, you can definitely tweet the same content over and over again, but I think you should switch up in terms of like the visuals or the wording of the tweet or something like that because people do get tired of seeing the same exact thing. It comes like spam and people don't like spam. People don't like ads on Twitter. It's seen as a place to go and really engage with people and talk to people and have like a natural communication that's not forced. So I think when you see like, because I see it all the time, people, they're really passionate about getting that the same piece of content out there but they're not getting the engagement because people have seen it before and they're not interested or it looks like spam it looks like an advert and it's not authentic Mm. i think you should always tweet in the way that you speak if you if people are listening to your podcast and they hear you speak a certain way that should always be the language that you use in your tweet i'm sure long time listeners know what i do for a living but Phoebe, you might not know, Mm -hmm. but I'm a digital marketer for Google Projects. Mm -hmm. I teach people how to grow their business online. Okay. And one of the things we talk about is how to use social media to grow. Mm -hmm. How best to describe it? Like, if you're a sociable person and someone wants to hear from you, someone likes you Mm. because you're relatable, you're authentic, you have your fin of those, you know, adjectives, Mm. right? But also, it's not about yourself. It's not always me, 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 me. Mm. Like, you all have that friend, right? And if you don't have that friend, it's most likely you guys yeah. who's always talking about themselves. It's you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, on that very note, it's like you only just ever talking about yourself and people weren't Definitely. engaging that. Yeah. So, the notion of retweeting others, the notion of following them exactly. back and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. helps. Mm-hmm. Do you specifically, because I know you probably, you've got more followers than you follow in I assume. Yeah. What's your criteria for those who, that you do follow? Does yeah. one have to mm-hmm. think about that, their positioning mm. of who they follow and how that might be associated with their brand? I think it's, you can tell the people who, if you follow like three people, I don't know, it it depends. I mean, the Pope, I know he follows himself in like different languages, which is goals, but. Amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I did not know that. Goals, yeah, he follows like Spanish Pope and yeah. I love Um, that. (laughs) Which is just like his tweets translated. Um, So. Only you would know that. (laughs) I think it depends on what you're trying to get out of Twitter. I think you get the best experience when you follow people who you were genuinely interested in. Don't just follow people because you want them to follow you back. Right. Um, I've made some amazing connections on Twitter. Not only the Receipts Podcast girls, you know, if you listen, you'll know that we met on Twitter. And if I was only using Twitter to promote myself and not to hear from other people, we would never have started the podcast. Right. Because if you're only using it to promote yourself, you do you, you know you write your tweets or if you're using one of those like buffer or any of those um social media management tools you go on there you see what the reactions are and you come off but i think the best twitter experience is when you have like your few you know your group of people that you kind of check for so a couple of women on twitter that i i always go on their feed and i see okay what are you doing at the moment how can i like retweet it retweet takes literally 2.2 seconds yeah then, you know, you read their articles if they're journalists or you listen to their podcasts and you, you know, you interact with them. Then when it comes to your time to publish something, they're going to be more likely to come along and, more inclined and to actually pay read forward. your stuff. Exactly. Because you've read theirs in a genuine way, not just, OK, I'll retweet you and you'll retweet yeah, me yeah. in a you know, a genuine connection. Then I've met them offline and we've you know had amazing conversations and we've supported each other and. No, yeah. I hear that. I hear that. Okay, so Phoebe, you've mentioned receipt podcast Have throughout. I? Funny that, <laughs> and I'm sure my listeners will be kicking me, and especially probably your fans, <laughs> if we don't speak about receipt podcast. 
are you tired of saying how you no, guys came together? No, I would never get tired okay. of talking about Do many people know the story anyway? Um, people always ask us, but we've said it before. We have said we say it in like every interview. Do you? We do. Oh, God. Sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> I think people are still, they don't quite get how it happened. But Taser Black, um, all good stories start with Taser Black. He <laughs> is uh, one third of Three Shots of Tequila. And um, <clears throat> their pop, pop podcast was really, really popular doing really well and people kept asking them to either have a female guest um or you know do something with women mm. um and he said oh you know jokingly and we found out afterwards this was like a ruse but at the time he tweeted and said oh a female version of three shots of tequila would never work and people were kind of saying yeah you know girls aren't funny and uh, da, da, da. <laughs> and then <laughs> tolly was it was tolly was um because they had met before she said, you know, I've got the name, just get me the girls. Like, you know, we can we can do this. Um, and then Taser tagged a few of us. Taser and I had had um, an altercation on Twitter a couple of days okay. before. <laughs> so uh, he asked What's him What's it about? Here, do you mind me asking? Oh, something about like Yoruba demons and Yoruba like demons. Nigerian men ruining your life. <laughs> so... What? Wait a minute, what was your angle? Do they ruin your life? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he was obviously you defending, not- <laughs> but... <laughs> Only speaking from personal experience, guys. Um, like, wow, yeah, you didn't hesitate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at that point, that was my genuine belief. Right. Um, I'm over it now. But yeah. Okay. So he um, tagged a few of us in um, who he thought who he thought would work really well together. We got an email chain going and we met up for a drink and Taser turned up late. But everything Taser does is like on purpose, but right. you don't realize it at the time. So he came, I think, like an hour or two hours late because he wanted us all to be there to bond among each other and then he would come in and, and like see how it was going. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And we were like, we can't do a podcast. Hazel was like, you've just spoken for two hours. That's exactly what the podcast is. Yeah, yeah. So it's fine. And we did a pilot, which was hilarious. Yeah. We were just literally screaming. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's something, okay, so that's the birth of it, really. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And what's the plan for it? Because it is also a very popular um, mm. podcast. And just speaking to you personally, mm. and I hope you don't mind me being so brazen about what to that's say, fine. but it seems like your agendas are all very different to what it is you want to do. Mm. Like personal, professional goals. How do you mean? Well, insofar as, I mean, I, again, I can't speak on the others, but off record we spoke about what's your play mm. and you really want to be in production mm. right and potentially with the girls if this does come to fruition a tv show mm. but you'd rather be behind the scenes than in front i can do in front of in front of the scenes no yeah, no, no on stage on, on stage. stage or in front of camera yeah <laughs> wow um i can be when i'm with the girls i can do on stage whatever cool i would never be on stage by myself that's just not really my area right. i'm much more of a, like behind the scenes planning production organization things like that but it's funny because as the group we need to be you know front of center someone offers us tv opportunities someone offers us interviews like that we can all go ahead and do that but in terms of like my personal life i'm a behind the scenes girl yeah definitely yeah. But I think it's good to have that balance. Of if course. you have four, you know, on stage people, then it gets a bit crazy. Yeah, you're different personality. You don't want mm. everyone who's so extroverted. Yeah. But the question, and this is me now starting to get a little bit uh, inner. It's fine. Where? That's what we're here for. Excellent. <laughs> 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 Who makes the final calls and things? Because the impression I get, mm. and again, this is just me. It's the impression I get is that you all want to be stars respectively you know but you do realize that together you've come as a collective so mm-hmm. you will move together as a collective mm-hmm. but if an opportunity came for individuals i think they'll snap it up i think we we would all take opportunities that benefit us as long as it's not at the detriment of the podcast right and that's always been the way like if tolly gets invited somewhere she's inviting all of us if i get invited somewhere we're inviting everyone but then of course there's value in doing things by yourself and then it's great to have people who support you in doing that so if someone wants to go and do like this podcast for example you let everyone know and everyone is going to be 
going to support you because the bigger that e- we each individually get is the bigger the podcast gets yeah so I, I think in some situations in some like group projects it kind of goes back to school like group projects someone wants to be the star and then that's at the detriment of the group yeah when really we could have just supported each other and all shone in our different ways because we're all so different and that's kind of the beauty of it that's why Taze is so smart is because he picked people who were different to each other we all have a different opinion on yeah. things we all have different ideas of what we want to do but we know that when we work as a group we're so much bigger and better if i started a podcast october um 2016 yeah <laughs> like, when did we start this yeah. if i started a podcast by myself 2016 i'm adamant that it wouldn't be as popular as it was since yeah like i'm pretty much sure of that okay forgive me i mean i am a fan i am <laughs> um, so where were we we were talking about journalism and we, we you've hit that in the nail and obviously you started working for cnn and within cnn platform you sort of navigated the space of mm. being a social media expert because yeah. they, no one had a desire but also <laughs> you, you smash it that's what you've been doing right yeah 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 and then within that that's how you also met your co-host for receipt podcast exactly. and become one of the most popular podcasts in the uk is that fair you i'll let you i don't know don't just you i'll let you decide <laughs> i don't know i don't want to be here blowing well, my trumpet hey hold tight it's popularity <laughs> i'm not saying it's great now jake it's great it's fantastic <laughs> but it is um and, for, and so far as statistics go it's one of the most listened to, without a shadow of a doubt. So congratulations. I'll let you that. say that. Thank you. There's no reason why wouldn't you say that? It is what it is. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess from my perspective, and this is Black Take Place perspective, are there anything that you think we haven't spoken about in so far as what people can do if they want to say, for instance, get into journalism, mm. if they want to get into um, social media editing? And forgive me i'm not going to talk about if they want to become the next receipt podcast because really and truly there's a plethora yeah Yeah. and also do check out the episode in which we did with renee richardson who's a good friend of (laughs) me in fact that's i think might be the only reason why you're here my favorite person (laughs) that is the only reason i won't confirm or deny it is definitely true I was not even on your radar, <laughs> pun intended, you know, <laughs> without Renee. Um, no, she's phenomenal. But do you guys do check out that episode yeah. because it's really informative. She gave some great advice. But one thing I will say that I think has really contributed, contributed to the success of the Receipts podcast that people don't really think about is hashtags. That's what we use on Twitter. We don't ha- even have a uh, Twitter account. Right. All of us have our individual Twitter accounts and then we use the hashtag to speak about the podcast and I think that really works because you don't have to at anyone if you want to talk about the podcast you just write your tweet and then you put the hashtag in and then everyone can see it so I think you know I listen to a lot of different podcasts and I often see people speaking about the podcast but I can't find those conversations because they're written at the handle instead of having a hashtag that everyone can go and um, and everyone is used to going to and tweeting about because if you introduce a hashtag like halfway through people are used to adding you so they'll just continue to do it and so no one has ever been able to add any receipts handle because we don't have one right gotcha that's one thing i will say about, about yeah about podcasting well is there any other i mean sure whilst we're well, all about we're all about <laughs> resources and advice yeah i think hashtags are really and that comes for like um social media as well sure, if you so campaigns or yeah something. if you're working for a brand um and they have a podcast or they have like a series that they do lots of um websites and magazines and things will have something they do every monday you know a feature that goes out every monday why not have a hashtag associated with that feature and then everyone can go back and find all of those and then people talking about it can find them that's some gems there you and know, then guys. <laughs> that's some actual gems there and it works on instagram too um so, so. vogue hashtag vogue issue 21 yeah and then and everyone can everyone go and talk, talk about, about the new vogue cover like yeah. that's i think that's really smart personally um (laughs) and i think visuals are really important with um podcasting people were drawn to the receipts podcast i think because of the artwork um you don't see many people of color in the whether you're doing apple Podcasts or whether you're doing you know any of these podcast apps you don't often see you don't see enough in my opinion of people of color and you're making it easy for people when you put either like a face or a hand or something like that or you know 
words that signify this is by and for people of color um so i think that's important and then having like all the information right there on the artwork i think is genius personally honestly never really thought about that at all yeah it's us. okay so yeah i am gonna go to the quick fire questions but oh there's gosh. a little segment i actually want to you scared yeah no, you pretty much know what they are okay. <laughs> <laughs> but i might just switch it up for you um <laughs> It's all about paying it forward and, you know, talking about resources, tools, so people can actually do and use themselves. Mm -hmm. But is any UK businesses or product services that you use? Um, wow. I give a shout out. It's a bit of a random one, but there's an amazing watch brand called Vite London. Um, oh, do you own one? Hmm? Sorry. I said you own a Vite yeah, London. Yeah, I do. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I came across them. Um, I was writing a story about them. Um, and then I was like, oh, I have to go and do the story. Boring. Um, I had to interview <laughs> this guy. I was like, oh, work, work, work. And then I actually got like really inspired <laughs> by um, by the founder, William. And he's actually, he's great on Twitter too. Um, so that's a great um, brand, brand so that I would check him out. Guys, endorse. no, Vita London. And I believe every watch that he sells, he then yeah. it goes to where? So he works with a couple of charities. One of them is in South Africa yes. and he provides school uniforms. Um, well the charity provides school uniforms he gives the money from the watches that he sells amazing no he's really inspiring guys so highly he's highly great. recommend yeah. uh, I'd love to get him on the podcast he's amazing he's also okay, noted guys chatting. you know I'm sure <laughs> we're gonna uh, gonna at you <laughs> <laughs> see <laughs> but, uh, at you put a hashtag so yeah. you better come on Will hashtag UK um, London okay brilliant <laughs> this is normally my cop out question but is there anything else that you feel like is important for us to discuss that we haven't mentioned mm. I think if we're talking about building a personal brand, mm. I think people are really scared to do that because they think, oh, I don't do anything. You know, why do I need a website? Why do I need Twitter? You'd be surprised the amount of people that come up to me and say, oh, I don't tweet. I don't I don't need it. Whether they're journalists um, or whether they're, you know, content, crea content creators of some kind. And I think it's really important to just like believe in yourself and build a website, build, you know, your Twitter account, because then I see them look at big bloggers and big, you know, YouTubers and say, oh, how, you know, she doesn't do anything. How does she get all these followers and, you know, millions of sub subscribers? Because she built a website or she started a YouTube channel or she did something to get her name out there. You can't be scared of, like, taking selfies once, you know, now and again in front of a building or shouting about the talks that you do and the articles that you write. Just start, build a website have your tabs in there, have a basic about page, contact page. If you're a journalist, a list of all the articles you've done, all the ones you're most proud of, you don't have to do all of them. Yeah. Start a Twitter account and just start shouting about yourself because you can't sit there and be upset that this person's in like the evening standard having a, an article written about them if people Google you and they can't find anything about you. That's genius. Yeah. And they do say the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Yeah. Do you like that? Mm. <laughs> True. bank um <laughs> you again there's something that you did right in which we haven't really covered and i i tend uh -oh. to shy away from it just because it can be quite um i'm so scared provocative a little bit oh, what, <laughs> did <I do? laughs> what did i no, do you're a big uh you're a big believer in your faith god yes okay yeah Religion. i'm not scared anymore okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was like what did i do what that I you're gonna bring up skeletons they will start popping out <laughs> the woodworks <laughs> But no, I, yeah. I do tend to shy away from it because I've obviously mm. got my own personal views on mm. it. But how much of a big role has your faith played or impacted it's the been decisions you make? And completely. Everything. Everything. How so? Because every time I go to do something or I, I'm offered an opportunity or whatever, I'll either go and find a scripture that relates to it or I'll pray about it. So in essence, every single decision I make is based on either what the Bible says about it or what God says about it, which is the same thing, actually. So what God says about it, either through his word or through something that he said to me. So um, I understand why a lot of people have a lot of skepticism about it. Often the case, a lot of people tend to be quite narrow minded mm. and won't look at it from the other perspective. Yeah. So the fact Especially that you the understand <laughs> why a lot of people might be a bit skeptical mm. about it what parts do you understand if you don't i think me? we're so used to being able to see everything like we buy something and then it comes like the next day you know everything is tangible and everything is fast 
And when you have to go and pray about something and it doesn't immediately literally drop down from the heavens next to you, you know, it's, it's a discipline that we're not really used to having. We're not really used to having to have self-control because society, every time you turn on the radio, turn on the TV, it's like, do whatever you want, be yourself, be impulsive, go and buy this, you know, mm. go and sleep with whoever you want to sleep with. And that's completely fine. So society and the media, which is the industry I work in, kind of completely at odds with what the bible says so it makes sense you know when i people look, look at me like i have two heads when i come out and say anything about god and it's because you just don't expect that well keep at it yeah. <laughs> i know mean, you will do you don't need me to say that to you all right you ready for the quick fire questions oh so scared no you don't be <laughs> what are you talking about so i love this question for just the purpose of wondering where your mind's at and what people might not potentially know you for so if you could do a ted talk Mm. Other than what your profession is, Mm -hmm. what would it be on? It would be about the power of knowing the Bible for yourself. I know it's quick fire, but do I get to explain? Yeah, you might (laughs) have to. (laughs) So I think there's loads of things that society will tell you about Christianity that if you read the word, you would know are not true. So even something as so um, like trivial as there being three wise men, there were not three wise men. The Bible never says that there were three. There were just a group of wise men. So I know that's like a really silly example, but things like that where people have this view of Christianity that it's, you know, strict and it's miserable and it's, you know, terrible. But if you actually took a second to read, you would know for yourself. Mm. Um, So we just believe what other people think without actually going and reading ourselves. And the problem, you know, there are some churches and this is, people know this that not every pastor is perfect so if you go and you hear something in the church and you go and do it if you and if you don't have your own understanding of the bible you will be blindly following somebody who could potentially be leading you down the wrong path yeah no 100 percent agree with that um back to the quick fire round i'm ready you've got your last five pounds what are you spending it on oh oh my gosh what would i spend my last five pounds on probably food yeah what will yeah. you buy with five pounds like a jerk chicken meal, probably. No, that's actually a decent price. Yeah, it was, I think meal. it's usually like five pound fifty. So maybe I can like have a conversation <laughs> with them, try and get them down. <laughs> you yeah. literally gonna haggle <laughs> the last fifty p. Like, it's okay. You can just like leave the coleslaw off. I'll sacrifice some of the rice. I won't, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, so black articulate, black action articulated. What is your favorite English word? No. Come again. No. No. Not that it won't come again, but yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite English word is no. Wow. Okay. I just think it's, pa- I love saying no. It's just so powerful because I, I didn't ever used to say no. I always used to say yes. I used to want to be, you know, at work. Yes, yes, yes. I'll do this. I'll come in early. I'll work extra. And once you've proved yourself, once you know how much you're worth, saying no becomes really powerful. Gotcha. Okay, so let me pretty much wrap up because I've now noticed the time. <laughs> I normally ask all my guests this. How would you like to be remembered? Um, I'd like to be remembered as somebody who represented God and who helped people who look like me. Perfect. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. No, it does. <laughs> it does. It really does. And I yeah. can't imagine people who don't know you personally and also obviously professionally or just know you full stop don't already feel that way. Yeah. But that said, how can we find you on a World Wide Web? Well, speaking and, oh, of... Okay. Um, <laughs> Let me laugh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was so ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Media training is kicking in. It really is kicking. <laughs> um, and when we do find you, what would you like us to do? Oh, that's interesting. Well, um, I have a website, as I was talking about earlier, the importance of having your own stamp on the internet. So it's just phoebepark.com. And on Twitter and everywhere, I have the same handle, at Phoebe Park. That's P-H-O-E-B-E-P-A-R-K-E. And when you get there, I would like you to tell me what you thought of this episode, good or bad or ugly. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Specific to this. Yeah. Not any job opportunities, anything like that. Maybe. Well, if you ever need advice, my DMs are open on all platforms. Uh, so do DM me. I've said on previous episodes of the Receipts podcast, if you're starting a podcast and you need help in terms of like artwork advice or editing advice, let me know. Amazing. Amazing. Guys, really and truly do do take full advantage of Phoebe whilst we still have her. (laughs) We're going to have you for a long time. Thanks.
decades. <laughs> half a century at the very <laughs> least <laughs> okay guys um as always if there is anything that i did fail to ask her and you were like you know what black ticklet you really are slipping you've got a great <laughs> guest and you're just not not representing the way you I used to i don't think there was anything but um, maybe but if there was please do give me a shout because i will just throw it to her and hopefully we might get her around too to see when she's mm. slaying with her tv show tv <laughs> production <laughs> Phoebe Parks mm. Media House. Mm. <laughs> Something along those lines. But Phoebe, thank you very much for coming on Black Ticket. Thank you for having me. Hey guys, we really appreciate you listening. And if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, all the info about the guests, the links, and the resources we speak about will be in the description below. And last but not least, please, please, please do get in touch if you can teach us how you do what it is you do. Because after all, Black Ticklate is all about empowering and upskilling the community. Thanks, guys. You're the best. See you soon.